स्टोरी बॉर्ड वी हैव कैनल फोले ईवीपी एंड डायरेक्टर ऑफ ह्यूमन लैब लियो बनेट वर्ल्ड वाइड स्पीक अबाउट हाउ हर एजेंसी वर्क्स टुवर्ड्स मूविंग फ्रॉम डेटा टू आइडियाज वी शो यू व्हाट वेंट बिहाइंड द सीन्स एट द ज्यूरी सेशन ऑफ क्यूरियस क्रिएटिव अवार्ड्स 2016 and we find out how abhay deol ira dubey and prateek babbar are helping mintra increase their consumer base in this week's notice board hello and welcome to story board this is shibani gharat carol pole evp and director of human lab leo banet worldwide says instead of talking about consumers we should talk about people thus in a very simple manner she describes human kind approach as in a human centric approach to marketing she speaks to story board editor antranga swami about how her team works towards converting all the data to create better ideas for the future let's hear the conversation So Carol uh, first let us know what you do at Leo Burnett for my viewers. Okay. Well, I and my team which is called the Human Lab at Leo Burnett try to take data and help that to inspire creativity. Right. So we try to move from data to ideas. We're not about evaluating creativity, we're about inspiring it and using all sorts of all types of data, many of the new big data sources, some older forms of data. uh in order to bring some inspiration to our writers and artists who are creating campaigns right before we get to uh deeper questions uh those of my viewers who haven't heard of human kind can you just simplify human kind for them yes human kind is a much more human centric approach to marketing that's than what's been used in the past so instead of talking about consumers we talk about people when we think about people we think about understanding their behavior at a deep and human level when we talk about a brand we don't talk about a positioning we think about it as a purpose as a human purpose that a brand has and when we think about advertising we don't just think about making ads where we talk to people but we think about engaging in what we call act creation where people can participate in the creative process with us and become a part of the brand and so we make these shifts from marketing terms to human terms in order to approach the whole process of marketing and advertising in a human centric way. Carol, you've been in this business for what 40 years now. Yes, a yes. little over 40 years. Yes. And uh, now you've seen uh, an age where there was little or no data mm -hmm. to an age where we have a mountain of data. Yes. And you were doing the same thing in 1974 as you're doing today. <laughs> how yes. how has this changed and how has it changed for the marketer? Well, it's it's changed a great deal, um it, both for good and for bad. Right. Um it has changed in the sense that obviously we have a lot of data, much more data. It used to be much harder to collect data, there wasn't as much of it. Now we have all kinds of digital and online capture of data, so we have huge streams of data available in real time at our fingertips. We also have because of computers we have the ability to analyze data very rapidly that we didn't have before. What used to take several weeks to analyze data or a study might only take a couple of hours today. And we can gather that data in real time and see things changing minute by minute in real time. So those have been um some of the big changes in the data. Um I think along with that come some good things and and some bad things. I mean obviously the speed and availability of the data is good. I think the downside of it is that we often have too much data now and nobody quite knows what to look at or what to focus on and we sometimes get lost in the richness of all the data we have. So being able to um pinpoint where to go and what to look at and how to interpret it is much more important today because there's so much. No. You know, part of the reasons why uh marketers are scared of data is because they don't have the patience to understand you know what you can or cannot do with data and they they are intimidated by the mountain of data yes so how do you help your clients understand that this is very important if used well well i think first we we focus in on on what's the question we're trying to answer if i'm trying to understand things about a person and their behavior it might be helpful for me to analyze some of the new data like what what their social conversation is online or how they're using search but at the same time maybe i just really need to get out and and do some old school work 
by following them around a little bit and observing their life and their day-to-day -day behavior, an ethnographic type of interview. Or maybe it would be helpful to just field a survey and ask them some questions. So there are a blend of things that we try to bring together that are relevant to each part of the process we're answering. If I'm trying to understand a different question, not just about the person and their behavior, but perhaps a question about where should I take a brand, I need to leverage techniques that are much more about the future and where things are headed rather than where they've already been. So it may not be as helpful to look at what people have already done, what they've already bought. It might be more helpful to expose them to some more futuristic concepts and ask them to react to that or ask them to talk about it. Um, when we're trying to map the future, we often use many spatial mapping techniques where we've had people react to things and give us data, and we use architectural software techniques to plot that into space and begin to create a picture of what things could look like rather than what yeah, they already sure. look like. So, uh, so it depends. So I spend a little more time, you are spending a lot of time on trying to figure out where things are going rather than where they are. Absolutely. So, so tell us what you're doing with your prediction models across the world. So we're, we're doing many things. Um, we have a whole group that's doing predictive analytics. So off of how people are responding to various offers, purchase patterns in their scan shopper data, or looking at how they're searching or what they're talking about online, we can build predictive models that suggest, given what they've done, where they might be going. So that's one way. Um, a second way would be to use survey research, which is a, a less modern technique. Survey research has been around for a long time. Absolutely. Um, but we might use survey research, but instead of asking people about things that already exist, we talk about new things that futurists are talking about, and we ask people to react to some concepts and give us some ratings in a survey about that data. And so then what we can begin to do is take predictive modeling that's using the past to look forward, but couple it with some much more innovative survey questions to again paint that picture of the future. We very often leverage um, things like blue ocean strategy types of, of thinking to explore new ways to reimagine categories. But we do that with quantitative data rather than, than speculating about it. We actually bring quantitative data to bear on, on addressing that. In India, we are typically marketers underspend on research. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would you say to those to big brands who are underspending in India for reasons one doesn't know. I mean, it's disproportionately low compared to any any advanced market. Yeah. So why should they invest in data and why should they invest in, in uh, say, your, your lab? Well, I, I think one of the biggest reasons to invest in data today is because with the, the rapidness of change and just the acceleration of change, there's, there's a great first mover advantage in, in markets and, and particularly in markets like India where things are developing so rapidly and there's so much opportunity. This first mover advantage can really be fueled by a certain type of data. And it's, it's often not helped very much by conventional things like the tracking study or the usage and attitude study, which of course are important to brands and necessary things to have. But in this day and age, they're necessary but not sufficient. Right. And so you need to really move into some of these newer predictive and futuristic techniques which is what we've focused on because, of course, we're the ones that are trying to come up with new ideas and new ways to create purposes for brands that take brands into the future, that appeal to the next generation, and that move forward. Wonderful. Good talking to you, Carol, and hope to see you back in India soon. Thank you. Thank you. It is time for us to slip into a short break. When we return, we take you behind the scenes at the jury session of Curious Creative Awards 2016.